The children of Micronesia. Our children. Our most valuable resource. The future of our islands. They will become our doctors, our teachers, our judges, and our government leaders. They will carry our island nations into the future. Currently, there are 50,000 children in school throughout Micronesia. What are we doing to prepare them for the 21st century? Consider these facts. The average English reading level for an 8th grade student in Micronesia is between the 2nd and 3rd grade level in the United States. Over the last five years, more than 70% of public school 8th graders in the Marshalls failed the Pacific Islands Literacy Skills Test. The average score of FSM 6th graders on the National Standard Test for Mathematics was a 37%. But the most shocking statistic is that out of every four students in school, only one will make it to high school graduation. The others will drop out along the way. Our public schools face these problems and more. But there are a handful of schools that despite all of these obstacles, are producing quality students. They are pioneering a turnaround in the performance of public schools. In this program, we have selected a few of the very best as we explore what goes into making quality education. The Micronesian Seminar presents them to you as Islands of Excellence. legends passed down to the words of mouth. Uh, they said that uh, a canoe sailed down from Marshalls and it arrives at Senwar. So the, the word Senwar means paddling canoe. So that's what they named the village. top elementary school in Pompeii for over a decade. 70 percent of St. Mar's eighth graders have passed the high school entrance exam over the last 13 years. In most other schools, not even 50 percent pass this test. Eugenio Ardos has been the principal of St. Mar Elementary School for 28 years. In addition to his position in the school, he is also the village chief in Senwar. The principal is the traditional leader of Senwar. He also has a role in the church. And I know that makes it very unique because the families in the villages trusted him. Uh, they trust him that uh, whatever he does, he has to consider the three areas in running this school. With his important roles in the school, the church, and the village, the principal is in a position to exercise strong authority in the school. In terms of discipline, discipline in the school is mighty strong. I do believe that discipline and learning go together. The strong leadership that the principal exercises unites the staff 
and provides motivation for them to work together. When we decide to do something, everybody will do it. The teacher here, I consider them special people because they work hard here, they do the best they can. We listen to the principal to whatever plans he wants us to implement in our curriculum. The principal advise us that each week we will prepare a outline and daily lesson plan to follow it every day. The way we like our job, the way we like our principal, the way we like each other, the working together that we have, oneness of our team, that makes a difference. Plus. Let me say that all these teachers are all committed teachers. In terms of attendance, they come to school every day. There are, you know in Bombay, the funerals are very important. Here at the school, it's the other way around. They come to school first, and after they finish school, they go back to the funerals. But the faculty isn't alone in their efforts. Parents and the community play a large role in the continued success of the school. A good school must have parental involvement. They share their ideas of where they want the school to go. That shows me that uh, parents are doing the job. The BDA, they said this is their school. It's not the government school. They believe that this school is theirs because it is in their community. They want us to reach a place where success is all in one, like uh, the PTA, uh, the students, the teachers. We try to run our school more like a GNU, a battling GNU, that we need collective efforts from everybody on board. With his faculty behind him, the leadership of the principal ensures that Senwar School will continue to be one of the top schools in Pompeii. I think what we are doing here, all schools could do. But one thing, cooperation is number one. Without cooperation, nothing can happen. Likiev, one of the remote atolls of the Marshalls, is an island with a history all its own. For more than a hundred years, the people of Likiev have lived under the close influence of Westerners. But like every other island, they have gone through struggles to provide a good education for their children. They found that the school was not producing the quality of students that the community expected and changes were necessary. So with permission of the Ministry of Education, they sought assistance from the outside and brought in the Marinol sisters to administer their school. This school here was just doing very badly and 
very few of the children had a chance for high school. So we talked about it. We didn't want to start a new school of our own. And we asked if we could get an MOU with the uh, Department of Education. And we got one. So the MOU, Mem Memo of Understanding, gave us powers, so to speak, to come in and do what we wanted um, as long as there were good results. And we worked with the people, the community, and the local council. Leather. Sound. Okay, now watch. Look. Okay. I think we analyzed first, you know, things that just had to be changed. Um, they were kind of on half-day schedules. They didn't have very many teachers. We came in and we went on a full day schedule. We developed with them a curriculum so that they had in their hands from grade one actual materials and for the most part they knew how to use them and they cared to use them. A major problem that Likiev School faced was a lack of motivation and commitment from his teachers. Poor materials and a lack of proper resources were compounded by teacher apathy and a high rate of teacher absenteeism. Before the management of the Mineral Sisters, we had a lot of problems. Some can come at 10 o'clock, maybe FD. Really problems. But after they came and managed our school, everything stopped. They are on times. By the time the Mary and Old Sister uh, manage our school, everything really jumps. Like we have the material, the curriculum is very good. Now we have everything. We have kite as uh, the uh, Mary and Old mate, and that's why I think our school is very coming up rapidly. <laughs> Our curriculum is different, but without training, it's not going to work either. So it's not just having a curriculum. There has to be something happen with it. Their new curriculum served as their guide. They found that it wasn't necessary for teachers to have lots of experience or advanced degrees to be able to teach well. The detailed curriculum allowed even teachers who had only high school degrees to be successful in teaching at their school. One of our real goals is probably that, that the school can run without us. It's their school. I think that's very real to us. We realized these teachers, they've got, they've picked up a lot of what we had to offer and skills they needed. And we, they, they shouldn't be depending on us. They can run their own school. We set up a finance board who handles the money. Uh, we set up a school board that really does take action when something has to happen. And the, the principal and the teachers by themselves wouldn't, would have a hard time. But they've got the backing of the community in that board. At the initiative of one of their teachers, Likiev School received a grant to begin a sea turtle conservation project in which the entire school is involved. All students share the responsibility of caring for these turtles. While the sisters were still managing the school, they also created a set of handbooks that clearly outlined responsibilities for the staff, the students, and for the PTA. The handbook outlines policies so that when a teacher says something or when Paul says something, he's not just speaking for himself. This is what the community accepted as policy. There's strength there. Twice a year, the Marinol sisters return to Likiep Elementary School and reevaluate their progress. They also give feedback to the staff on how to make improvements. I guess the first thing we really do 
is observe in each classroom and try to pick up weaknesses and strengths, talk them over with the individual teachers. We do a lot with in-service training. The teachers really appreciate that, and they ask questions, they take notes, and they try to apply it. So you get that commitment again. People here really, really like our school and like what we do. They're really committed to do it. And the people are happy because they see the resolve with their children. I think because it is from the old, from a long time ago, everybody worked together. When we have something big, we always get together. Likiev School knows that without the committed support from their community and the continued assistance from the Marinol sisters, their school could not keep its number one standing. Everyone must stay involved for the school to remain successful. In the Republic of Palau, south of the beautiful Rock Islands, lays the island state of Peleliu. This island, rich in war history, was the site of a great battle during the Second World War. Today, the spirited people of Peleliu are creating a new history with the remarkable accomplishments in education that they are making at Peleliu Elementary School. The former principal, Emery Wenti, took charge of the school in 1992, and over the next eight years, he transformed Peleliu Elementary School into one of the finest schools in Palau. You know, when I first worked at the school, I, I tried to work uh, on the school image um, more than others, because at the time when I went to school, Peleliu Elementary School was one of the schools at the bottom um, in terms of Palau High School. Uh, entrance examination. So one of the things I had to work on is changing the school's image from being seen as um, being at the bottom of the ranks uh, to bring it out of the pit. Yeah. One thing that I saw there at the very beginning, even when I was still a teacher, uh, is that uh, there were no, no clear um, standards or guidelines or rules or policies uh, whereby uh, the teachers, the staff, and the students uh, have to follow. The acting principal at Peleliu describes the changes that Emery Wenti brought to the school. When he got on board, uh, the, the teachers uh, got to know what they were supposed to do what time they're supposed to come into work, uh, how do they dress up when they come to work, uh, what are they supposed to be doing in class, or how are they supposed to be teaching. Uh, in the past, a lot of teachers come to work with zoys and uh, shorts and pants, uh, thinking that it's only in the island school, so it, it does not matter because we're away from the central office. But when he came on board, he says, Monday, everybody dress up. That's a dress up day. And uh, Monday to Thursday, you have to dress like a, a person who actually comes professionally. You have to dress professionally. One thing I'm very proud about the teachers at Pelelu Elementary School now is that they are all computer literate. And every single teacher knows how to use the computer lab. On top of that, every single student, and I mean every single student at Pelelu Elementary School, knows how to use the computer. Wendy's strong leadership required his staff to develop a professional work ethic, which translated into improved student achievement. It took a while for the school to improve on the Palau High School entrance exam. At one point, it ranked at number seven, and then number three up to number two, and then finally, 
it became number one on the test. Uh, it was no longer just a school. Uh, it had become a good school. Much of the school's success can be traced back to Principal Wente. He believes strongly in inclusive management, allowing input from all and making everyone feel important. One of the things that I have um, learned from school and from work is that it's best to have uh, many people participating in decision making. Wente even included students in the decision making at the school when he established a student council for grades 1 through 8. When the community sees that the school is doing very well uh, for their kids, uh, for their state, they're very willing uh, to provide for the school. Something small, it could be something big for the whole community. Especially when there's school events, it's really, it's a big matter, a big thing for the community. Like every Fridays we have a track and field. They come on and cheer the kids, even if it's not a real race. Hillelieu has a reputation for producing some of the best athletes in Palau. It's a standard that has been set, and now it's a tradition for the younger generations to uphold. The climate of the school itself uh, makes it such a comfortable place to be for students and such a good place for uh, people to support. Um, so there's a lot of support and assistance from different groups uh, that come to the school simply because they see it doing very well and they, they feel proud to be part of it. Emery Wente is no longer the principal of Peleliu Elementary School. He was promoted to the Ministry of Education Central Office as the Director of School Administrators. Yet there is no fear that the school will slip back into its old ways. I don't think the teachers want to go back to the olden days. They want to keep up that standard and make, to show Emery that he left and what he did, it's, it lives on or what it keeps on going. The people in Pereliu, um, they always like um, being on top. Um, um, they, they pride themselves uh, as coming from a beautiful island, from a good place, from, when you say Peleliu, uh, people, they really expect it to be uh, among the top, to be one of the best. Students and faculty at the Libibnau Elementary School are expected to climb to the top. This Yapi school excels in student achievement, faculty resourcefulness, and community involvement. The Instructional Education Coordinator for the WAB School Zone Sister Mary Margaret Margot reflects on how the Lipid now got to where it is today. They have had a principal who died, who was very strong. And so he, he brought the school to where it is. That school has gone. At one point, I was acting principal over there because they didn't have a principal. So it has gone through struggles. But because that man was there who laid a foundation of the staff that is there now, these others came into the, into the picture, and they have some certain regulations to follow. The groundwork laid by the former principal 
serves as a guide for the school to maintain its high standards. The faculty has been working together for a long time, so they know what they are expected to do. Good. Mr. Timothy Tani was selected by the community this year as a new principal. He is a former board member, and his background is in management. Um, my job is to uh, keep the staff interested in what they're doing. I, I think that's really job number one for, because they have to know, they have to like what they're doing. What really helps me in this uh, position is uh, the fact that I know them very well. And so uh, communication is not such a big problem to me. The school has become the center of the community, a place where students, parents, and staff all come together. And there's a sense of uh, our, our pride being, you belong to this place. I mean, we like to look at it as a symbol of the community. They did help build the school with their own bare hands. Even they helped with the library. The community believe, believes they own it. Yeah, it's really something they're really proud of. Ownership has inspired a proactive school board, a board which desires complete control over the direction of its school. Their goal is to make the Lipip now a charter school and take it away from the government to administer themselves. Uh, as you can see, I'm happy because of the community helping the school, they know the importance of the school. So they, uh, they uh, participate in all the school uh, uh, activities, especially when we call on them. Not only does the school expect participation from the community in school activities, the parents must sign a contract when registering their kids at the beginning of each school year. We do tell the parents when they register the kids here. You must get involved. In fact, we do have a contract for them to sign. You have to uh, commit yourself to, to your school. You have, you're just on top of a kid here. And they say, yeah, we'll see you after school. One second. Number of seconds. I think the, the, the school board and the community and the school are trying to have the parents participate in the education of their child. The instruction at the Lipip Now Elementary School often takes kids out of the classroom, using extracurricular activities to enhance their lessons. We like to uh, involve in so many activities, and the kids like to do activities. And we like to, I think we learn, you learn more by going out and do things. You stay in the classroom and you get so bored. One teacher at the school saw the need for the school science classes to explore the local environment. So with a grant, the school and the students built a nature trail where students have identified the various plants and trees in the area. In addition to naming them, students are also studying their local uses. The nature trail, the only one of its kind in Yap, is not simply the product of an 8th grade science class. It's a demonstration of teacher initiative, student collaboration, and community support. The school, the community of Dalipib now, is devoted to continue on this path towards excellence. Each school, as I said, have their own lifestyle of running the schools, but uh, Mob Community School is very uh, close and work with the community. Their school board, through their school board, they get the support of the community. They make their own policies and their own regulations. And, uh, and they are special in the sense that they have a very strong uh, community tie through their board. 
and the instructional leader there are, are, are very good. It's not easy to find leaders, very hard, especially in YAP, uh, to find a leader who can encourage people, who can uh, be on the go, which NAS is. Naz Kanangzev has been the instructional leader of MAP Community School for 13 years. Naz himself was a graduate from the school. He is devoted to the community and to educating the children of MAP. Not only has he committed himself to his job, but he has also given some of his land for the school to use. Uh, I don't really do my work because of money. I do it for the people of MAP. MAP is more than an elementary school. It is a community school. Everything about it is centered on the community. As a result, Naz makes sure that his staff takes part in the decision making of the school. He has a suggestion box on his door where teachers can present their ideas. I think all the teachers at MCS are committed to the school. Not only are teachers committed to the school, but they are also committed to working with Naz as their leader. At one point, Naz was transferred to the Department of Education Central Office to work on the new curriculum that the state was developing. Within a year, the staff went to the Department of Education and requested to have their principal back. The commitment of the principal and faculty is matched by the commitment of the parents. The PTA at MAP is responsible for making the rules for the school. It also provides strong feedback to the teachers and principal on the operations of the school. I think school is something very important for the community and I've been looking at my community that they are very uh, active in involving in school activities and I, everything I ask them they give. Everything about the school I tell the parents and the community and I ask their help to join the staff to work together for the better of MAP uh, children. The way I feel and the people from MAP, the parents, the school board and the student, the school is our own school. The government give us money, help us providing the material or whatever and the community, MAP community, they care for the school because it's their own school. I think through the communication of the school staffs, the participation of the parents, and uh, communication between the parents and the staff, is, I think it, that's the reason why this is a good school. We share one goal and that is to to help MAP school be a good school. I think the best part for working here is that uh, it's it's my community. It's my community school and I like to support it yeah, as much as I can. In Chuk, where public education has been struggling to stay afloat, Mechitu Elementary School stands out sharply from other schools. Mechitu School's brightly painted two-story building is a token of the community's dedication to the education of their children. This is for the community. It belongs to the community. Even the land that doesn't belong to the government. It belongs to the community of Mechitu College. That's why the, the sign says, Mechidi Elementary School and Community College. Because this place is, I mean, this place belongs to the community.
the whole community is very proud of the school. And uh, I think ownership is, the, is also a good thing for the community. They feel they own it, so they, they fight for everything. At the helm of Mechitu Elementary School is Danny Manier, an energetic and committed principal whom the village selected to run their school. So we got together, the parents, and we decided that we would put him in, the, in that position. Yeah, Danny Manier is a hard-working principal. He's really active. He wants uh, the staff to work cooperatively and work hard to help the kids. He's a good uh, principal. Hey, you know, the, the chief of this uh, village, sometimes he, he comes, I think, three times a week himself. He has one of the keys of my gate, and he also has the keys for all the classroom. So when he comes in, I love the students, talk to the students, and for the students to come every day to study hard. Besides active involvement of the village chief, the school depends on the help of parents who come every day to assist. There are some mothers who came with their uh, kids, like first graders, and when they see trashes all over, they like pick them up and put them in trash. Also, when we're short of teachers, they also like get into the class and help just write up something and teach the students. The parents of the school are genuinely concerned for their children's education. Several years ago, when the government-sponsored hot lunch program was terminated, the village decided that it would provide lunch for its students rather than release the students early to go home from school. I think uh, Mechidu is uh, kind of unique because I see the PTA of the community really help the school and the students to... Because we work together, that's the most important thing. We work to the, together. Myself, the teachers, the community, the parents, and also the people, the students. That's why I think we, we're on the top list now. Because as you go in the classroom, we don't have any textbook, we don't have any materials, but we try our best to. Even though we don't have those textbooks, even though we don't have those materials, but we still try our best to use whatever we have on hand. When asked what accounts for the school's success despite a lack of funding and proper materials, the principal put it very clearly. If we really think, if we really try our best, if we really do work hard to be a good school, to have a good school, to have a good, to have good students, yeah, we can do that. We can, it's from our heart. To me, it's from my heart. I'm trying my best to have a good school. I'm trying my best to have a good school. And I think I achieved. In the heart of downtown Koror lies Koror Elementary School, a large urban school that offers a different view of what elementary education can become. When I started um, working here, the number of uh, students were a lot uh, smaller than what it is today. Our current enrollment this year is 792. We have 24 uh, classrooms. Uh, every class is from first grade to fifth grade have four sections. Eighth grade has uh, been departmentalized for about five, more than five years. We felt that um, it would be for the student's benefit if one teacher would be uh, teach one course uh, so that they do not have to sit down and plan for six different lesson plans. 
Aurora Elementary School has 38 teachers, four special education teachers, one computer lab manager, a librarian, and a cafeteria crew. In an organization this size, absenteeism can be a big problem. But Coror has developed a system that works. With so many students, there is a need for many different programs so that each student has what he needs to succeed in school. Coror has developed a special ed program for students with disabilities, an after-school remedial class for extra tutoring, and they have a lunch program sponsored by the Ministry of Education to feed all the children. Because most of the parents are employed, mothers as well as fathers, there is not the same degree of support that is found in smaller rural schools. Attendance at PTA meetings, although it can number over 100 people at times, is still small when compared with the size of the student body. I know that it is very important for every parent to come to school when there is a meeting to be aware of the what's going on in school, be aware of the problems, if there are problems, be aware of uh, if uh, there are something good about the school, they should also know about it. Uh, I've encouraged uh, my teachers to have uh, not, um, to have mini PTA. And that's uh, its section, not class, but its section would have their uh, PTA at night. This year I had a PTA meeting and um, I asked them to help me with a lot of things like the, we had an old blackboard and I need a new one and they gave me two new blackboards so and not just that but asking them to come in and help in the classroom. Coral Elementary School has had a reputation of being a top school and now the community expects great things from the school. It's not easy to, you know, when uh, people are expecting something from you. And I think the teachers are aware of that. I always uh, tell them, you know, we do not want the image or the idea behind the core elementary school that people consider it being a good school, uh, you know, go down. We don't want to disappoint the parents and the community. And to do, to keep that up, we have to work extra hard to maintain that. I think all in all, it's just the cooperation of two, uh, the teachers together with the community has really made um, the school what it is. Lela Elementary School closely resembles Koro Elementary in size. It is the largest elementary school in Koshrai, and it has one of the highest averages in the state. We have the curriculum similar in every school, in every elementary. And the solid courses are math, science, social study, and language art. These are the uh, courses that we teach every day. Lela School has developed a model teaching schedule, one that maximizes the strengths of their faculty while lessening their workload. Instead of having teachers do all the subjects in their homeroom class, they are only scheduled to teach the subjects that they are strongest in. I believe that some of these teachers are good in math, some are good in social studies, and some have uh, more background in science. Hence, their teachers only make three lesson plans per day and teach to their strengths. Both students and teachers benefit from this type of scheduling. We give extra hours to the students. After 1.30, the students go home and uh, eat lunch and they come back to school. So this time we continue to provide uh, our assistance to the students who are not uh, performing well during the uh, instruction hours. And if a student should fail the Koshrai High School entrance exam, 
That student will be referred to the central office for a one semester computer class. This class strengthens their skills so they can retake the test and gain admittance to the high school. Even though the school has innovative scheduling and a sound remedial program, the principal still believes in the significance that the community plays in keeping the school successful. I think everybody in school, in the community, in the church, has to work together. Because uh, as a school principal, I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, achieve the goal myself. They have to work with me. It needs everybody in the community to raise that child. The approaches that these schools have taken en route to educational excellence are varied. While there is no simple formula for school success to be found in these stories, there are certainly a few common themes that emerge. Many of the schools described here would not have been able to accomplish what they did without strong community support that developed over time into a sense of community ownership of their school. Another strong theme of these success stories is strong leadership, usually, but not always in the person of the principal. Some schools continue to draw on the inspiration and creative work of a past administrator, while others look for leadership from prominent figures in the community. These schools represent what education throughout Micronesia could be. Every community has it within their power to reform their school and turn it into an island of excellence. <laughs>